Hello and welcome. Well, Judicial Confusion Part 2. And I know that uh, if Chewa is not careful, we will definitely pass Chewa with the way we are going. This every day comes with its new story. Well, uh, Justice Derry actually, uh, you know, filed an injunction against uh, Anas, Arimi Yaw Anas, uh, who's the uh, acting editor-in-chief New Crusading Guide. And then there's Samuel Frimpong, editor the New Crusading Guide. Ernest Ado, who is the deputy editor of the New Crusading Guide. Uh, Nathan Kwabna Anochi Adisi, who is the chief executive officer, Star FM Accra. Now, there were, oh, and there's Suleiman Abraima, who is Media Foundation for West Africa. Now, the, just, the uh, Justice Derry was under the assumption that on the 12th of this month, or next month, the case will be held. Now, he sat at home minding his own business, and then he hears on the radio that his matter has been to court and has been either struck out or dismissed, which we are yet to find out. So he's saying that he hasn't had a fair trial, he hasn't had a good day in court, and therefore he's uh, petitioning the judicial service of uh, injustice. And there we are today. Now, all these legal jargons sometimes make me confused. So then what I do is I get a legal luminary to come in here and educate myself. And once I learn, I know for sure my viewers too will learn. And when I come back, I'm talking to Victor Adahudu, who understands what all this is about. My name is Danan Sakwa, and this is PM Express. Don't move. Well, Judicial Confusion Part 2, and as I said in my intro, that if Chewa does not stand firm, we are going to you know, pass them with a number of parts that we're going to treat on this issue because every day or every week seems to come up with a different twist. Let me just quickly <coughs> read uh, this uh, to you. And uh, says, please accept our compliments. And this is a petition. Uh, Justice uh, Otta Paul Derry versus Anas, Arimiyao Anas, and all the other five uh, uh, respondents. Now, it says, uh, we act as solicitors for and on behalf of Mr. Justice Paul Otaderi, who wish to bring to your attention certain happenings in the above-mentioned matter that is of grave importance to the administration of justice and of the violation of the right of our client to a fair hearing of his case filed in the court, uh, in the High Court, Accra. Our client uh, accused... I, I, our client caused an, a contempt application to be filed against Mr. Anas Arimiao Anas, acting editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide, Samuel Frimpong, editor of the New Crusading Guide, Ernest Adu, deputy editor uh, the New Crusading Guide, Nathan Kwabna Anochi IEC, uh, CEO Star FM, Suleiman Abraima Media Foundation, West Africa, which was scheduled uh, by the registrar of the Fast Track High Court to be heard on the 12th of October 2015. And it says into bracket, please find attached a copy of the said motion paper and supporting affidavits. To our surprise, we had the news to be specific, Joy FM 12 o'clock news and on City FM news, that the said contempt application had been heard today, the 29th of September 2015, and dismissed by the Honorable Justice Gertrude Tokonu, uh, a sitting as a additional high, a sit in as an additional high court judge. We're here to uh, get understanding, you know, as, as the whole thing. He continues to say uh, this came as a shock to us since uh, the the motion paper, uh, the said case is scheduled to be heard on the 12th of October. But there's an inset which, if it's ready, we'll just watch the inset, get the premises, and then we we'll start the conversation. Then after. I will introduce my guest properly again. We don't agree with the decision. But so we are we are going to take further instructions from our client. Pardon me. Consider. As we you see we act on instructions. The case the cases are not for us lawyers. The cases are for our clients. So we are now going to consult our clients and then if they say we should appeal we will appeal. If they say no, let's forget it, we will forget it. You sounded so confident at the beginning of this entire matter. Did it surprise you that it came to this? I'm still very confident. 
So I don't. Um, are you surprised by the decision of the court? You, you sounded very confident in your legal arguments in court and all. Uh, you see, legal positions are normally opinions, and as I said earlier, the High Court is constituted by one person. There's a higher court, which is constituted by three persons. There's still yet a higher court, the highest court, constituted by five persons, sometimes seven, sometimes nine. There are some, like former Parliament, uh, Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Michael Kwe, who think that <laughs> this whole exercise is in futility. And in fact, this, the, the court's decision today uh, to those people may mean that you may go whatever length, you still hit the rocks. Well, I, I don't want to discuss uh, individual people's uh, opinions. I've told you that in law we deal with opinions. That is Professor Mike Okwe's opinion. John Ndebuga has a different opinion. So you can't force me to accept Mike Okwe's opinion. As Mike Okwe cannot be compelled to accept my opinion. So we, but the, po the point is to exhaust the legal process and then the truth will come out. So the essential what you are saying is that you are going all lengths to push for justice. That is if our clients say that we should do so. We have, we the lawyers have the capacity. We are willing and able. Are you so so you are not disappointed? You are not disappointed? No, I, why would I be disappointed? You see, when this building is solid, it was built many years ago, before many of us were born, but it is still solid. So when you have a solid foundation, you don't really shake. If you have a solid foundation, you don't shake. And that's what we're trying to do. Build a solid foundation for ourselves so that the next time these cases come up, at least we know where we stand. And uh, with me in the studio is Victor Adawudu, you know, my brother who's sort of visited me, even though there's so many legal issues flying about, but he can run, he can hide. Uh, a legal practitioner. Uh, Victor, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> uh, charging, charging. I don't even want to say congratulations. You go. On. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously. If I have to congratulate somebody, it's Gifty. Alice, she has chosen you over all the other competitors and the men. Gifty, congratulations. Uh, maybe he did a trick. We'll learn what trick he did. I'll, I'll teach, I'll <laughs> teach. Teach. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> let's, let's we're fast <laughs> moving on to legal issues. Yeah. Uh, we, we find it strange. Let me just start from the you know real substance that if I was at home and I was hoping that on the 12th of October I, I have a case or I have my day in court, then suddenly Joy FM at you know 12 noon says, oh, you know, that's like your case that you're supposed to be held on, you know has been held and, and, and dismissed. Uh, I want to find out if it's right, and then later on we'll look about dismissed and struck out, and you know, which, which one is which. Yeah, th thank you, Nana. Um, I believe that this is a case that, as we have all heard that the case was dismissed um, by the court, I'm tempted to believe that until I see what the ruling or what actually happened in court, then I can differentiate what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes, um, because when you go to court and you file a motion or any application, the registrar is the one who gives the date. That on this date, you have to come to court and that will be the date scheduled for the motion to be moved. On this particular matter, is the 12th October. However, there's also another process by which the parties, if you think that the day is too long, it's not convenient, you'd have to come back to the court, file another motion application, which you serve the other party. Normally, when you serve the other party, making the other party aware of what is happening, we call it motion or notice, that we want to abridge the time. We want to make it shorter. So if it is granted by the court, then that means the date that you have agreed to, that you have shortened it, that becomes the day. Mm -hmm. I don't know, in this process, that is what has been done. Now, if you look on the date that has been given, the 12th October, the 12th October is a date for the new term because of the legal vacation. Mm -hmm. So the new term starts after the call of the lawyers, the magistrates has their... Listen, so from the 12th going, the new date will start. 
no, the new term. So I'm, I believe that that's why the 12th October maybe was given for the next term. Now, this time we are, we have vacation judges also. So with the vacation oh, so judges. So she's a sitting judge. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's, she's a court of appeal judge. Mm -hmm. But if you're a court of appeal judge, or even a Supreme Court judge, the Chief Justice can instruct you to go and sit at any of the lower court. Okay. Yes. So that's why we say sitting as an additional yeah, high okay. court judge. Or you can say sitting as a secret court judge. Mm -hmm. So you can sit in different capacity. Now, with that, so I don't know what is on the docket. Now, going to the, you know, the tenor or the construction of the petition, what has been sent, it means that they have not been aware of the 29th as a date that this ruling or the application has to be moved. So this came as, a, as, so, came as an absolute shock. Yes, yeah, so I, it's, it's also when I also heard it, and I think I tried to find out whether there had been a motion to abridge, nothing of that sort had happened. And I don't know how this could find its way that it happened, because at least if you are given the return date, everybody, the court is made aware. You are also made aware that the return date is on the 12th. Victor, let, let me read here so you can explain. Uh, it says, <clears throat> furthermore, we are reliably informed by the bailiff responsible for the service of the application on the respondent that the first, second, third, and fourth respondent in the matter uh, has not been served and also that none of the respondent has still has till date filed an affidavit in opposition to our application. Our client has also not been served with any hearing notice seeking to change the date endorsed on the set motion paper. This, in our opinion, is a clear violation of our client's right to be heard in court. Our client instructs us to petition your good office to cause an investigation to be conducted into the matter uh, raised above and uh, to ascertain the uh, veracity for the necessary remedial action to be taken. Now, even the, that's where I was going to go. Now, the second issue up after the abridgment, if that's one way of doing it, that's you bring the date forward. Mm -hmm. The other way is also to issue a hearing notice to the parties. So you issue a hearing notice. The hearing notice just mandates you to appear before the court. You may not know the reason why you are going to go to court. Mm -hmm. Now, there is also another issue that can crop up. It's that you would see your name on the cost list. The cost list is normally prepared by the registrar that on this day, let's say Monday, this case is pending before this judge. Now, when the judge sits, the judge would also make sure to see whether we call something the proof of service, that when the bailiffs go and serve the people, the parties, mm -hmm. they come and they fill and say, on this day, at this time, at this place, I serve this process on this person. This process mandates them to appear before the court. So the rule says that if there is any proof of service, it's a prima facie case that the person has been served. Mm. So the person chose not to come to court. But if that is not there, it means that the person has not even been served. Some of the judges, even if you go to mm -hmm. court, it has not been proved. It's not there. Nothing shows that the person has been served. Maybe he comes in. Some of the court will insist that make sure the person is served before I go on with this case. Now, so the belief is supposed to prove that. He is supposed to serve, then will prove the service and says that I have served these people or not. So that is why upon these three scenarios with the cost list, that is how this issue that they are not aware of it Sounds and strange. this month, it sounds a little bit strange. Let, let me acknowledge uh, Samson Ladi Ayanini, uh, our own in-house lawyer. <laughs> yeah. uh, Samson. Hello, Samson. 
Have I got something online? Sound, have I got something? I don't think he can hear me. So let's come in here. But with the issue of if a case is struck out or if a case is dismissed, I mean, I know we don't have the facts, but I, yeah. to, to the layman, if, if, you, if my lawyer came and said, oh, Nana, your case has been dismissed, and one of your case has been struck out, which one should I be happier? Or you should be happy when it is struck out. Oh, I see. There are three, three scenarios in this. When you go to court, a case or a motion, um, it is put before the court. One, when it is striked out, that means that it's either the parties, when the case was called, the parties were not there, or the, what has been put before the court, there is a okay, defect. I, I, hear, I hear something still on the line. Hello, Samson, if you can hear me. Can Samson hear me? Sound, can Samson hear me? Okay, no, I don't think, I don't think, work, out, work on the sound and then let's, let's get something back. Yeah. Sorry. The second one, it means that there might be a defect on the motion. The form and how it has to be prepared, there might be a defect, it is defective. So the court can say that, look, this, in our language, our parlance, we say it is incompetent. So it can be <laughs> striked out. Now, you can also go to court and say that I have detected some fault in my motion. So I want it to be strike out as withdrawn. Okay. So you withdraw it. Now if it is strike out, it means that you have an opportunity to come back and put the same process before the same judge or another court. So we call it it's been relisted. Okay. Now if we say it is dismissed, that means you don't have the opportunity to come back with the same application. Mm. It, it means that dismissed. So that's why I'm a little bit hesitant with the reportage. I, because it's not everybody who knows the rudiment and the tenets of this jargons that we use, the term of act. This is coming from ADU and ADU legal attorneys. And they've written, you know, to our surprise, we heard that the news... Oh, no, they, yeah, head, on they, the they head on the news. They head on the news. that has been dismissed. Yeah, so, it's been oh, dismissed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. until we see what actually <laughs> the judge said, whether the case has been striked <laughs> out or dismissed, or dismissed. We can't, if we can't it is striked out, it means that when the matter was called, because the Justice Derry, who is the applicant who applied to them, he was not in court, then the courts can decide, say, it is your case. If you're not here, I will strike it out. Let me go to the phones and see if I can hear uh, Samson. Hello, Samson, can you hear me? Can Samson hear me? Hello, Samson. I think we have challenges with the phone because uh, I, can't, I can't hear anything at all. And uh, so let me, let me come back to, uh, to, to, to studio. Now, Victor, let me take you all the way back before we come back to all these legalese. I mean, do they have a case? I mean, this injunction thing. I mean, would it would it stand? I mean, would it? Well, it's it's, it's for me. It's the frontiers of the law are being expanded. Mm. The exposition of the law and the interpretation of the law. This is how the law can be tested and be found. And I believe that. It's a matter for the judiciary or the judges itself to sit down and look at the matter. Yes, in as much as there's so much public interest in this matter, I don't think that the rights of others should be sacrificed. No, due process must go on. And I believe that they are looking at the law, what the law says, and they want the exposition of the law because, as you said, it's different interpretation, people's opinion, until there is a final decision or judicial pronouncement on the basis of the articles. So these are issues that are being sent to the court. Now, with the contempt, it is not really about the parties. It's not to dignify or have an assaulted victory by any party. It's about the sanctity and the authority of the court. 
because it is believed that when there is an administration of justice, it should not be brought to disrepute. In that, when there's something the court says, everybody should be restrained, and other party goes to defeat the purpose, it brings the sanctity of the court into disrepute. Mm -hmm. So contempt is about that. It's not about the parties when it comes to contempt. It is about the court itself. Mm -hmm. So if the court itself deems it that what has been done does not bring the administration <laughs> of justice into it, the court can dismiss a, a contempt application. If the court feels that what has been done has been done to overreach its decision and thinks that that has brought the authority of the court into disrepute, then the court will convict the person. If it's a continuum or a continuous activity, the court will say, purge yourself before I find you or I send you to jail. So it is not absolute to say that the moment I file and it is contemptuous, some even it can be contemptuous. But the judges will look at it and say, yes, this is contemptuous, but content is a weapon that has been given to us and we must use it scarcely. We must use it on rare occasions so that it becomes deterrent. Not that we use it every time so that it becomes, you know, people are not so much scared again when content has been filed, they know we'll be fined or in it. So that's there are a lot of mixed factors when it comes to content application. I hear I, hear I have something on the line again. Let me try uh, see if it will work. Hello, Samson. Have I got something on the line? Sound, do I have something? I don't think so. It's not connecting because I can I, I can hear him. I can hear him. Now, uh, there are two. The, 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 there were two school of thoughts uh, with regards to this expose that Anas brought out. Now, the judge's position was that you know let's call us in, you know, try us indoors, you know, in camera, and then if we are right or wrong. But in this case, it's all out. We've all formed our perception, so now they're going to go and try. So if through technicalities they come and say, oh, no, 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 you, I don't have any grounds to hold you. Well, you've already been held. You've already been crucified. I mean, so on, on that point, Victor, do they have a case? Yeah, it's a constitutional provision. The constitution says that when it comes to the superior court judges, mm -hmm. that's from the high court, court of appeal, supreme court, if anything that they have to be impeached, as Article 146 and 8 says, it says that it should be held in camera. And we had a precedent by this Ajay Chum and Berta mm -hmm. in that case, which says that any petition, any document that will have to be used when there's a petition, it should be held in camera. And because it was made public, that document could not stand the test of evidence. Mm. Now, looking at this case and what has been shown in public, if it is the same document that is going to be put before this committee, then going by that decision, mm -hmm. it will be difficult to accept that. But the Supreme Court is a place where they can make their own decision and depart. <laughs> they can make that decision in the morning in the afternoon, another panel sits down and overturns that decision. That is the power that has been given to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. I believe the power that I was given to the Supreme Court to do that, it is to look, because they interpret the Constitution. You know, crafting judgment, you look at the social sentiment, economic, you know, it's a factor, mixed factor. Mm -hmm. So they do that looking at the situation in the country mm -hmm. and they also make sure that what is done is done within the confines of the law so for me i felt yes if this less they are testing the case is it going to be the exact thing because my understanding and uh, maybe from the grapevine is that what is being put is the 500 hour video clip mm. What has been shown to the public is a little over three hours. Mm. 
So the issue would be, is it an exact thing that is being put there? Yeah. I don't think the actual petition has even been, I haven't seen it, mm. nobody, I haven't seen it in public, the actual petition that was put before the Chief Justice. So looking at all this, uh, we will wait to see what the Supreme Court would speak and say about this decision. Because this decision is a decision that is binding on all the lower courts and others. As the same Supreme Court that can change its decision. Now, you know, one interesting thing that comes with what happened today for yes. me, I look at if actually, if it is as the media wants us to believe and know that the case was dismissed, then if this case was dismissed, where the parties were not given a fair notice and others, I believe by the precedence we have in the law, it will be a nullity. That also, again, the parties can go to Supreme Court and the Supreme Court can quash the decision of the High Court. We call it the supervisory jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. It is believed that, yes, not one person has monopoly or is a repertoire of knowledge. So judges are human beings. Mm. They can make mistakes. So if they make mistakes, which is apparent, it is clear on the law that what the person did is wrong, they give you opportunity to go to Supreme Court so the Supreme Court can correct that decision. So we call it the supervisory jurisdiction. So there's something in Latin, maybe when we want to, you know, bamboozle the layman, we say sexurari, mandamus, all those things are some of the opportunities that you can go. Now, because all the ultra pattern is that to hear both sides in a case is very, very, very important. Mm. And when our law, it seems that, look, this even goes to the jurisdiction. If two sides have not been heard, so there should be hearing notice. If there has to be service, and if, especially when a motion is pending or a case is pending in court and the parties are made aware of the date that they will come, they will have to be given, there should be a hearing notice, especially if the case is adjourned and no date and other <coughs> have been given, definitely they will have to serve them. Any judgment or any order which breaches this rule is a nullity. You can have a good case, have all the judgment and everything. This alone, the mere fact that one party has not been served or one party has not been heard, it's a nullity. So that makes this case that actually if it is, the case has been dismissed and they are not aware of this, I'm sure that all that they will have done, that's why I want to hasten slowly yeah. Yeah. and see what actually, because... I know the judge, uh, her ladyship Tokonu in this matter, I think that she's one of the people who take her, ser her job serious. She's also on top of her job. So that's why um, I just want to hasten slow and see what actually was put before her. Because mostly judges work with what has been put before them. What documents, what has been put before them, and normally it is the registrar, the people who put all the documents. So if she checks all her papers, everything is in place, I'm sure she will go ahead. If it is not in place, so uh, it is interesting times. I believe that this will bring a lot of things. It might, it's either it's a mistake of somebody or something different has been done. And it will be a novel situation we would see. In this case, I mean, uh are you allowed to move this issue to an appeal court or you have to go back to the same court and say, no, 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 hold on. You know, I, I wasn't tried fairly. No, no, if you want to relist, you go back to the same court. You go back with another application and say that I was not informed mm -hmm. or I couldn't come to court because I was sick or my client was not available. For these reasons, I have a solid defense to this matter. So I want it to be relisted. You go mm -hmm. before the same judge. If the same judge will grant you, normally when it comes to real listing, 
and you have a genuine and legitimate concern why you were not present, it will be granted, and you relist. Then you come before to argue the, the motion or go ahead with the matter. If that judge refuses, then you have an opportunity to go to court of appeal that you want to relist the matter. If court of appeal also refuses, you can still go on to Supreme Court for them to understand why you want to relist your matter. Yes. So it is done in a way so that to avoid delays and adjournment, people would only come and say, well, adjourn my case. I'm not here. I'm sick. So some of the time, you know, lawyers go, their clients say, oh, my lawyer is indisposed. Some judges will insist, will say, oh, okay, let him bring a medical certificate or prescription to show he was not well. If you bring it and you reapply, your case will be reenlisted. <laughs> because they know, they have the, also the, been the, in the practice, trick, they the know trick. the <laughs> intricacies of it. Some will insist that, no, you are just dragging your feet. You don't want this case to move on, so I'm striking it out. <coughs> that, those, those are the intricacies in this matter. I, mean, I get the sense that, you know, her ladyship, uh, Tokono, uh, doesn't want to take any chances because he knows, you know, she feels, uh, I mean, the, the shake-up in the system and therefore, you know, probably move and say, look, you know, let's just deal with this thing rather than deal with technicalities because if they focus on technicalities, they may not redeem themselves. And there's a lot of technicalities in this case where uh, if you're not careful, a lot of them will use so much technicalities to escape the net. And I'm sure they are trying to avoid, you know, the legalese. Say, no, 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 you know. No, I don't. No, no, no. If we say the technicalities, normally what we, we be, people also say technicalities is that the rules has been made to govern the procedure. If you don't follow or there's a slip somewhere, one person can say that you've not complied with this rule. Because you've not complied with this rule, let it go, mm -hmm. or let's throw it away, which we call the form. Maybe the form by which you have to present your material mm -hmm. before the court is not being done. That's not compliant. Mm -hmm. The same court also come and say that we should not always look at the form, but let's look at the substance of the matter. Mm -hmm. Because people would come, and maybe they have made mistakes. So if your lawyer has made some blunders or mistake by not putting the form. Does it mean that sin should be visited on the client? The court says no. So most of the time, let's look at the substance. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not really about the compliance in this matter. What the compliance they are talking about is a constitutional provision, especially when it comes to justice there. Mm -hmm. He is talking about constitutional provision, that this is how it has to be. Done. And he, when he started his matter, he didn't want the clip to be aired, mm -hmm. which has been aired. That's why he brought the contempt. So, and you know, when it comes to contempt, it does not hinge on the matter that you brought to court, maybe the substantive matter, because it's a quasi-criminal matter. So it is a different matter on its own. Let's say you come to court and say, let me give you a very typical scenario that a lot of people may follow when it comes to maybe land. Mm -hmm. When it comes to land and they say, don't go and build, everybody is restrained. Then one party goes to build. Then you bring him for contempt. You know, the law says that most of the time, it is not the same judge who is sitting on the substantive matter who would determine the contempt. Because it is seen as two different matters. The mm. contempt is seen as quasi-criminal. When we say quasi-criminal, it has criminal intent. It is punitive. Mm. You can go to jail for contempt. So it has a criminal element in it. So it is really not to say that because there has been no compliance in the substantive matter when it comes to the contempt, it should, be, it should follow the same. No, the court only has to look at whether the conduct, whether the behavior brings the administration of justice into disrepute. Whether the people knew that 
we were not to do this, and they did it. And they did it willfully. Some could do it without knowing that this will be an illegality. If they did it, and they didn't know it was not willful, it would not be content. I'm going, to, I'm going to take a break, and when I come back, I'm going back to my same question. So let's, the chief just indeed, you know, we can all see that she's moved very quickly, you know, to shake up the system, to indeed get that confidence back in the judiciary. As I always say, no judiciary, no state. Uh, everyone in high office, President Kofu, Tum Fo, has all spoken that this is your chance. If you miss this, this is how. Could this be see why we're hearing, you know, you know, seeing such things, you know, come in this particular case. Don't go, we're coming. <music> Judicial confusion part two, and we are getting educated, but I was just trying to get out of all these legally business and, you know, come back to the street level and find out, listen, with this, you know, uh, problem that the judiciary is facing now, could this be, uh, you know, something to shake up the system so that they don't use legalese things and drag this case on? Look, when your matter come, satisfy the public. Is that what we are saying? Oh yes, and you know, in as much as the legal matters will be done, mm. I believe that the Constitution itself and the Judicial Service Act and others set up an administrative arm. So the Chief Justice is the head the administrative head mm -hmm. of the judiciary. Even if we don't go by legal means to look into this matter, administrative procedures would definitely go on. And that's why I believe that when it comes to the judicial officers, that is the judges of the lower court, you would see that that committee that has been set up there, which the constitution prescribed, is an administrative committee. It's, it depends on how you look at it, mm -hmm. but when you go into cases of judicial review or constitutional administrative law, you will see that that is an administrative committee that is being put in place to look into the matter whether there is a misconduct on the part of the lower court judges. Mm -hmm. If there is a misconduct, then that is when the Chief Justice can discipline with the Judicial Council. Tapa, we are, we are in a situation where now, let the blood flow, let the judges flow. That, I mean, that's what the public wants now. No, We've seen no, you the see, video, we are angry. Yeah, yeah. I've always made it that I have always said that, look, let's say things slowly. You see, we have three arms of government. Mm -hmm. We have the legislature, we have the executive, the judiciary. The legislature they would always be accountable to us after every four years. Mm. We have the opportunity to change and say that we don't want it to be a member of parliament because of ABC. Mm. So if there is an issue of corruption there and you are involved, you can bet me that your constituents and people would even call for your head. The same applies to the executive that when they say the president is corrupt or the other people or people in the executive, there is a way public opinion controls them. Now when it comes to the judiciary, especially when it comes to, there is the constitution has laid a particular mode by which we need to deal with corruption in that judiciary. Mm -hmm. And this is the mode. Why? will the framers of the Constitution make a separate mode for the judiciary? Because the judiciary is seen as the last bastion of justice. It's the paragon that we need to go. Either rich or poor, ruled or ruled, ruler or subject, we all go before the law. That's why we say, equality before the law. No one is above the law. That is why people who we make judges can play God on earth. And they are the only people that the law has empowered to change the destiny of people. A judge can sit and say that, look, you have, have convicted, you have sentenced you 
to can, death. Yeah, to death. Now, so when it comes to an issue of corruption, there is a particular mood we do it. If we bastardize the judiciary and it becomes a failed institution, then where comes from the hope? Where comes that we will have justice? I have practiced for some time. Look, I ask a lot of people, you travel out, they will tell you, yes, we believe in the justice system, the judiciary in Ghana, but it is slow. Most of the complaints you will get is that to get justice is slow, but in the final analysis, to definitely get your justice. Mm. Is that we are not patient, the impatient and the frustrations that comes with it. Mm -hmm. That's what. Now, with this issue, I don't believe that whether it is gone through the court system to vindicate others or to absorb others or others are found culpable in this matter, I believe that it is time for the judiciary where the Chief Justice and other eminent people have spoken and said that it is an opportunity for us to look at the whole judiciary as a whole. How do we get judges onto the bench? Mm -hmm. How can we insulate the judges from the public? Because what is happening is a reflection of the society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I always want, not to justify it, but then you are a traditional ruler. Mm -hmm. You know, if you understand our culture, go to the village, buy something for the poorest woman or person. Even when you give that gift, if he has a cock, which is big, or a goat, they will come at dawn and say, oh, we want to say thank you for what you did. And it's something that culturally is accepted. And I believe that it's that underpinning that we are importing into this. That people will come and say, oh, chief, this is something small. Say thank you. Which we are trying to institutionalize that, which is becoming the bane mm. of our society today. So we need to rethink and see how we can isolate these people from the public so that nobody gets access and can walk into a judge's house. Or, you know, there are things that we need, and I believe the judiciary will use the opportunity to streamline things so that people are not tempted. Mm. You know, lead me not into temptation. <laughs> let, me, let me divert a little bit and come back. But, you know, the, the conditions in which judges find themselves, their place of abode, their place of working, and, I mean, uh, maybe uh, the, 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 the way we are treating justice is what, is, is what we are getting. I mean, I don't think we've paid enough attention. I mean, I mean a judge should live in a clean environment and you know, a nice clean office, but some of the places they lived, you know, you think, judge? Um, yeah, no, no, but it's, it's uh, I still come back and say, it cuts across society. Mm. Even the civil servants, uh, others, it cuts across society. Now, I see the position of a judge as a, a place of honor, mm. a place of trust, a place of responsibility and nobility. So if you have the calling to be a judge, even to be a lawyer in the first place, it's a call. Because if you are, you are you moving on or you moving on to to the to the, to the bench to the bench? Yeah. Oh, when we get there, yeah, we'll cross get the bridge. Cross. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a calling. Now, in every profession, some make money, some don't make money, but integrity and credibility. I always say when it comes to our profession. The only two things you have is your integrity, credibility. If you lose these two, you are finished. Mm. There's nothing you can do. So in as much as if you go even to the bench and you think the remuneration is not too good, it is a call you are there to serve, to serve and dispense justice. That should not be to say my conditions are not good, so I need to make some extra income by indulging in illegality. That's not, that's not mm -hmm. accepted. Now, you know, in practice, you see some lawyers live flamboyant. They do because they work, they get a lot of money. 
I don't think a judge would want to compare himself to someone in private practice who is doing and driving all the cars. Because you chose and the calling to be on the bench and it comes with honor. Mm -hmm. So what you are doing, this should be the yardstick that you measure yourself. In private practice also, I believe there are lawyers who have integrity. There are others who would do what just because they want the money mm. to go for. And we find it all in all facets of life. So insulating the judges from the public so that they do not get this. And they must have that understanding. I believe that before they get to the bench and the orientation, they understand. P P uh, before I end, PPR-wise, what should the Chief Justice do or what, what can they do to prove to us that, listen, you know, there's a shake-up now, have faith in the judiciary? Oh, I, I even believe that the, the mere fact that uh, this expose has come, it's, I believe it's one of the things to um, actualize the perception that we have had all along the years that there is a corruption in the judiciary, where most of the times we believe that um, the clerks and other judicial officers ostensibly takes the money to be given to mm -hmm. the judges. And if you watch the clip, you could see that this has been some way that maybe they contact the clerks and the clerks will have to lead you to the judge to be able to speak to the judge and mm -hmm. others. I believe that the Chief Justice has the opportunity now, and as a nation, we have the opportunity to say that, look, this will never happen again. No more should this happen, because the judiciary is at its lowest end. But the fact that we are down does not mean that yeah. that is the end of it. I think it's an opportunity for us to rebuild, to come solidly with a judiciary that everybody can vouch and say that, look, I know I'll have justice. It will be a speedy justice, and I'll have access to what I want. It's, it's, it's also an opportunity for others to consider and see that, look, this is a noble profession. Going onto the bench, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what is expected from me. You know, most of the time, people, others will not want to go to the bench because you know from day one that when I go to the bench, I don't have a social life. You can only enjoy a family life. But you can't be going all around, going to um, pub, going to funerals, um, naming ceremony, seeing all over. No, 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 no. It is not accepted. It's against the ethics. So I believe from now people would also understand and know that, look, the bench is not a place where I think that I can make the money that I mm -hmm. think I would make. It's a place of honor. It's a place of trust. And you are held in high esteem in society because of the job you do. I am sure uh, in the days coming ahead will be very, very, very interesting with regards to this uh, dismiss or struck out case. And I'm sure we are all waiting. But I want to say very thank you very much to uh, my brother Victor, uh, who is a legal practitioner with credibility and integrity. That's as for that, you know, we can vouch for him. <laughs> we can I'm, vouch for him. I'm, I'm humbled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you to Tantiz who sews my shirt. And Tantiz is on 024-362-001. Thank you to uh, Azalu who's shouting in my ear to uh, run up. Uh, Aisha who does the production. And to all of you who watched. And uh, to Mrs. Christine Ama of the University of Ghana. I know you're also watching and sending your comments through. Tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you very much. My brother, thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>